Welcome back to the Real Estate Agent Advantage. Thank you for checking out this show. Today's episode is a good one. This happens to be Adam Bailey, a partner of mine from Wichita, Kansas. Adam is a bit of a superhero in the real estate world. Uh, he built a team and an independent brokerage. He had ownership in, in Wichita, Kansas to how many deals a year? Yes, over a thousand deals a year. How did he do it? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about here. We're talking about online leads, conversion, ISA, systems, processes, all the goodies. He's dropping some bombs here today. Check it out right now. everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Agent Advantage. My name is Lauren Cooper, as always, yep, sitting here north of Toronto, Canada, and I am here with a special guest, as I am every week on Mondays, but this one's extra special because he's a good partner and a friend of mine, Adam Bailey. Adam, introduce yourself to everybody, say hello. What's going on in the world today? What's up, guys? All right, so Adam, you've, you've been in real estate for how long now, man? Uh, That's my 12th year. 12th year. Okay. And you've got an interesting story. First of all, tell everybody where you are down in Wichita. Give everyone sort of a paint a picture of yeah. where you're at. Uh, yep. Yep. So yeah, thanks for having me on by the way. Oh, pleasure. I'm uh, basically in Wichita, Kansas population about 400,000 outskirts, maybe, you know, half a million, um, you know, in terms of you know, geography, most people have heard of Kansas City, right? Um, and about two and a half hours south of Kansas City in, in Wichita. So awesome. Uh, yeah. So let, let's dig in because you've had a really incredible career in real estate in the 12 years that you've been in it. Yeah. Why don't you tell everybody, I mean, what were you doing before you even got into real estate? Uh, yeah, man, that's a that's a great question. So at the age of, you know, 22, maybe going moving into 23, I dropped out of college. Um, dead broke, obviously, and living, you know, uh, in an apartment and uh, just, you know, struggling to get through college. Came from, you know, lower income family, first person to graduate high school, my, my, my family. And, and so I was like, if I'm going, you know, to college, you know, to focus on business, um, I was working in a call center and uh, which was MCI. We used to sell local and long distance for you people old enough. They used to know your local and long distance bill used to be split out. Right. Um, and so I had some call center experience and then, you know, uh, they went into chapter 11 bankruptcy um, and they had a major call center here uh, in, in Wichita. And so they brought in, you know, like a job fair to, you know, do job placements, interviews. And, you know, there's this company called Aflac, which sells supplemental insurance. Um, and, and they were looking for people to get their real estate license and, you know, start an agency. And, and so I didn't know if it's the dumbest thing I did or the smartest thing I did, <laughs> but I swallowed the hook, line and sinker and went and got my insurance license, dropped out of college. Um, you know, and started, you know, selling insurance. I went, you know, dead broke, went and bought um, sell, uh, dress clothes from the Salvation Army, you know, a, a thrift store pretty much, if you know, if you, if you know, if you go oh, yeah. up, up north, uh, rolling around in an 89 Buick, uh, windows barely crack, you know, AC doesn't work or the heater don't work in the, you know, wintertime, rolling around, blowing into businesses, you know, trying to, you know, get, uh, you know, uh, employers to let me <laughs> manage their payroll deduction with supplemental insurance. So I had to figure out data management, strategic follow-up because, you know, uh, traditional healthcare doesn't open up, you know, besides once a year for open enrollment, right? So you have to have a good follow-up game. You got to get past gatekeepers and then you, and then you're going to get one pitch a year, right? Um, uh, struggle with that only made $11,000, you know, my first year and that, and that's why I said, I don't know if it was the dumbest thing or the smartest thing, because I was, you know, paying for my education and rolling around, listening to, you know, Zig Ziglar, right. Uh, automobile university at its finest for sure. <laughs> um, so, uh, but my second year, you know, I had a guy that, you know, told me, Hey, you're probably not, he sent me down. He's like, I don't even know how you got past the gatekeeper and, and um, if you're still in business a year from now, you know, I'll give you an opportunity. I followed up that one year mark. He was shocked. I was still in business. I didn't tell him I only made $11,000. Right. Um, and, you know, and then I ended up growing it 
you know, for five years doing well, covering multiple states, uh, using my call center background, and then the market crashed 08, 09. Uh, covering three states, um, you know, people here, at least in the states, wasn't rehiring at that time due to the subprime crisis and, and all that stuff. And so everyone was getting out of real estate at that time. But, you know, Aflac, uh, you know, get, you know, was giving me stock similar to the model we're in now by just doing my job. Uh, so I cashed out a bunch of stock. I took a year off and um, was looking for an opportunity. And I thought I was going to have to go back and get a job. And we know what that means. Just over broke and I, and I didn't want to do that. And basically uh, everyone was getting out of real estate and that was another decision where I don't know if it was the dumbest thing I did or the smartest thing I did. And uh, you know, I got into real estate at that time uh, as an inside sales agent, you know, vetting out opportunities to work on marketing and going in and looking at systems and processes with the guy that, um, you know, basically changed my life. And I didn't know he was going to do that at the time. Um, and then I started probably making around 300 bucks a week as an inside sales agent, you know, uh, working on marketing, setting up uh, appointments and, and things like that for the agents at the time. What kind um, of appointments were you setting up in that call center? You know, there was no call center at that time. You know, oh, okay. when, I, when I moved into real estate, I ended up developing one for him. No one had really knew what inside sales agents were, ISAs and there was none of that stuff. There weren't IDX feeds weren't even uh, out yet. Like they were just, you know, coming to fruition. And so all the I, websites were clunky. The homes that were on that website were just, you know, traditionally the listings of that brokerage. Right. Um, and this guy was on radio um, and had it, you know, inbound, uh, made the phone ring and it, and it had about five to seven agents uh, doing very well. When I came in about 300 or so uh, closings. And then, you know, I was down, at a mastermind he took me to, I didn't even have my real estate license yet. And, you know, they were talking about IDX feeds coming out and um, whoever could generate thousands of internet leads um, uh, through these new IDX systems where every single home listed would be, you know, running through a portal could end up building a call center off of it. And I had that background from my MCI, uh, how I used to augment data through the library, through public information and target my avatar of owners. And then at running a dialer at that time uh, was unheard of in insurance, right? And, and so I just rolled that model into uh, real estate and we started generating thousands of leads. We went six figures in the hole, almost pulled the plug on it. We didn't understand anything about cash conversion cycle, nurturing, um, any of that stuff, data management at, at, at the highest level. Um, and right around nine months to a year into it, you know, like we started figuring it out and then I got my license and, you know, the very first home I ever sold was a $25,000 house. This guy had to waive the transaction fee for me to make a hundred bucks. And I went on, you know, my ego was bruised because I thought I was going to kill it in real estate, you know, and I'd only sold, you know, 24 houses. And that might be a lot in your market because your average sales price. Um, and I ended up you know, like you only selling 24 houses, but our average sales price at that time was 120,000, right? Right. Um, it would team splits and, you know, franchise fees or whatever that we had structured, you know, around our independent brokerage at the time. Um, but, you know, we ended up building a call center off of that was to develop agents on the phone, teach them data management. And then, you know, being able to deliver pre-approved buyers on our agents' calendars, pre-approved buyer consultations, pre-qualified listing appointments of the watermark of what we call quality uh, allowed us to, to evolve into building a client care resource center where when I was looking around, most agents um, were, you know, had commission breath and they only focused on where their income was gonna come from in the next 90 days. And I seen the industry, this was what, 10 years ago? You yeah. know, at this time, I'm a couple years into it where I'm like, you know, like, the, the, and I figured out there's a dream stage, which is feeding the top of the funnel. And these people are nine to 15 months out. Right. And how do we psychologically get them information, um, that, that they need in the different stages that they need it in. Right. And it kind of goes back to the love language, communicate with people the way that they want to be communicated with. Um, and, and so we started to really crack the code and, you know, every eight valid conversations, we were kicking out qualified appointments. And these are people we were nurturing for multiple years or, or whatever, and, uh, and killing it with our live chat and stuff like that. And we took a, 
uh, you know, a brokerage, you know, from five to seven people up over 90 built uh, 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 transactional departments, listings department, full blown marketing teams, um, operations, expansion. And, uh, you know, I ended up becoming a top agent and a brokerage ended up, you know, um, gaining uh, ownership off sweat equity. Um, you know, from 2012 to 2019, we were ranked ninth to 12th in the nation, bouncing around those slots um, and all team categories and brokerages in, in the Wall Street Journal uh, here in the States. Um, and uh, yeah, man, that's kind of what, you know, kicked this thing off and, and, and my journey. And I worked my way out of the field. I think when I, you know, we were at like 388 closings, I was laying in an airport in Georgia and uh, I just, got done, you know, leaving a convention, a, a, a CRM company or whatever. And I think I spoke on the ISA stuff, showing our metrics, cause we tracked everything. We knew right. our call volume connects. We knew, you know, valid conversations to appointments. Like we had everything, everything predictable. Right. And we were like 388 closings. And I told the guy at the time, I didn't have ownership. I was still, you know, just becoming a top agent and developing the call center and doing all this stuff. And I remember laying there staring, looking at the ceiling. I said, we're going to close 700 houses this year. And we're going to go back and tell our team that. And he's like, we've never grew by that percent. We're not going to tell them that. And uh, I was, you know, at the time, a team leader, I uh, had about 300 eight, or 30 agents under me. And uh I didn't have ownership, I don't think at this time or whatever, and, and still selling it. And I told the group, you know, he said, make it 500, don't do 700. And I said, no, we're going we're gonna to set the bar and this is what we're going to do. I really figured, I really thought we were cracking a code. And so we laid it out there, 700, every, you call me crazy. And then I put it out there on the internet and, and now we you know, had to live up to it. And I think you speak things into existence. You really manifest them. Um, and I really knew we were onto something and I believed in the people around me and, and definitely myself. And we ended up closing 688 homes from 388. So up, it was like 75, 78% growth, whatever that number ends up, that ratio was pretty close there. And, uh, you know, then, you know, he worked his way out of the field. I worked my way out of the field to work on the business, not in the business. Um, because you, you don't build a you know, business, you develop people and they build the business. And, focused. We were more looking at ourselves as a marketing company, even though we were an independent brokerage. I put out there, we were going to start closing a thousand houses a year. Um, you know, we went from 688 closings to uh, 853, 950 something, you know, there's a lot of things operationally we had to figure out. Like, you know, it was like, we had this engine that was, you know, like a, 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 like a race car engine, but it was on a Pinto frame, right? So yeah. we're going down the racetrack and this thing shaking, the wheel is about to pop off. And so we had to pull the car over and, you know, rebuild the frame and keep making tweaks to the engine until we had a supernova race car and um, blew past a thousand units with about only 20 agents. I was just here in Wichita. Um, and that was phenomenal. And really, you know, building an assembly line real estate uh, team. Uh, and so our independent brokerage was the team. And then, you know, we started a coaching company, um, you know, and, and I didn't want to start a coaching company. I had so many people hitting me up and there's a whole story behind that. And uh, I, I hopped into it. Um, even though we weren't a publishing company off some things I learned from Tony Robbins and at some of his events through experiential learning and being able to scale that way. Um, done really well. And then through being top in the nation, I had more people wanting to get in business with us and we could execute on. And so I needed to find some solutions. And, you know, that's how you and I had came together. I, I, I solved them solutions, you know, about two years into meeting you and, uh, you know, partnering with you. But that's kind of the gist of, you know, how I got in real estate. And then, you know, where I'm at now, you understand it. And it, I mean, it, and it's bigger than I imagined, even when I saw sure. some stuff for myself four years ago. Absolutely. So let, let's go over some of those details because people will find that really interesting. Everybody listening is at a different point of growth in their career, yeah. right? There's some brand new agents. There's some agents that have been in the business that are struggling. And then there are some team leaders, right? That are looking to take yeah. it to the next level. Right. Some are even uh, owning small brokerages like you guys did. You had an independent brokerage. Right. So you had over a thousand units for 20 agents. I mean, what did that actually look like? Give me, give me an example of how that machine ran, because that seems quite overwhelming. Um, look at it. You know, how do you eat an elephant? 
one bite at a time. <laughs> right. So when I'm talking about how do you build a machine like we built, like you're going to have to build assembly lines, right? And you're going to have to create specialists, right? And, and so for an example, as we evolved, um, our splits had to change and our value proposition to our agents and the consumer had to change. Um, and so for an example, when you're, when you're looking at, you know, database management, we had over a hundred thousand leads, active leads opt in to our system. So that's 25% of our population through radio ads, Google, Facebook, you know, Yahoo, uh, all the different channels of marketing. I can get, there's a whole list of them, right? right? Fe feeding the top of our funnel, um, and building good prospecting teams, building a good client care resource center. And. Um, then, you know, we have buyer specialists. All they focused on was working with buyers. We had listing specialists. All they focused on was with listings. You know, for an example, we paid our listing agents, um, you know, in terms of net numbers, it was like, you know, 30, 32%, you know, um, that they're netting, but they were making six figures and, and, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, cost of living that like, that's really well here in our area. Right. And, yeah. and they're home at night with their family. They're never missing their kids game. Their quality of life is good. You know? So for an example, they look at their calendar today and they're like, I have three or four listing appointments. And then we ask them to show up, you know, present, seal the deal, get the paperwork done. Or, you know, if they're having to make some suggestions, you know, to get the house ready, you know, off our 89 point marketing plan, you know, paint, make, you know, neutralize the home, declutter, whatever they got to do, you right. know. Um, so they're kind of, you know, following up with their little base of like appointments they've already went on. Um, then, you know, they're, they're uh, filling out the listing file, right? And then they take that listing file, they're turning that to the listings department. And then the listing department pretty much takes it all the way to it getting live. Like, there's a full team uh, working with them and, you know, a carrier marketing team, photography, videography, everything, design, yeah. everything. And yeah, then the complete support system. These people just had to focus on their area of expertise and that's right. it. When people hear, you know, splits, they freak out. You and I both know we've been talking about, you know, different, different splits for different things recently. You know, the 50, 50 split, 30%, whatever, 70, doesn't matter. People freak out. They don't understand the reality of what it is they're getting and the value. Well, well, the, well here, you know, and then when you look at even the listings department, once it, you know, goes under contract too, there's another transaction management team that will, you know, manage it all the way to close, you know, obviously the listing agent steps back in to uh, manage uh, an offer, right? Like it would come in, you know, through, through our department, go to the agent, he presents the offer negotiates with the buyer agent. And then we'll step in during the uh, repair request and then show up to closing, like, you know, and then, so if you're waking up every day, I have X amount of listing appointments or buyer consultations to go on. And then you got a whole team of support behind you. It keeps you in high uh, leverage situations, income producing opportunities. So, you know, I know we're in business together now. I know I have globally 2,400 agents right now on my modern team, other owners, partners, new agents, top team builders now. And we're showing them how to do the same thing. Like took a, one guy, you know, 200 agents to over 800 in a couple of years, well over a thousand now he's also charging, you know, through another ecosystem, four grand to coach with us and coach him back for free. You know, that type of stuff changes your net profitability. And the conversations that I have up there with, you know, like I had a call yesterday with the guy up in Canada uh, looking at the model after our, uh, you know, calls yesterday. It was my last call of the day and um, doing 150, 200 units, um, 300 million, you know, highly profitable. Um, but he paid Remax a hundred grand and he's on the 95, five split. Right. And I know what ours is, but there's a cap and, and I'm like, dude, I'm going to save you $80,000. And this is a hundred percent model for you because you're an icon agent. And I'm going to show you how, to, where the plus is going to come from. Right. Right. Um, like I for people that don't know what you're talking about right now, I'll just lay it out quickly. Adam and I are our partners together in eXp Realty, and this is not, you know, one thing or another thing. All companies have their pluses and minuses, but with us and our specific model, um, he's talking about how you can be more efficient and more profitable 
uh, if you're running a, a team that yeah, size, just to right, check the plate off. Right, right. So this guy, you know, talked to one of my other, you know, people, and, you know, he declined because EXP isn't making any one of us successful. We had our own brand. We got our own business. We got like everything. And basically it's, it's like a little Intel chip that we can plug into our business and create more opportunity for our agent agents, right? Um, help them build equity, help them build an exit strategy without going and buying rentals or flips or, you know, them eventually outgrowing us because we're always developing in the old models are people, you know, to, to be, you know, develop into competition. Top agents, but they end up becoming competition, yeah. right? And now they can swing out into partners or build other income streams with us or other opportunities come to fruition. And so when, like, you know, when I was talking with this guy and, you know, he came through one of my other videos after he had said no, and he, you know, watched and started consuming some stuff. He was like, wait, hold on here, you know, and hop back on a call with me. And most people think that they understand what we're doing, but they have no clue. You know, for an example, when we're profiting over a million dollars a year, who cares about revenue share, right? Um, some of our tech we have is great for single agents, but we'll call that the Cadillac, right? And we were running a Ferrari of lead generation and, and CRM. So what, like, what's a Cadillac to a Ferrari? So I didn't get that when I was, you know, trying to solve this solution. No one brought the model to me. People telling me I needed to look at it. So that didn't make sense. I understood, you know, the equity piece because that's what Aflac did with me. And thank God, because I cashed all my stock out and it gave me a year you know, not to be forced into something else to where I could make a smart decision to get into real estate when everyone was getting out of it. Right. So what was that? And, and then there's other things like that, that like that I didn't see value in, or I put it in the same box as um, a Remax or um, a KW or uh, a Royal LePage or whatever. Right. However, yeah. I, I didn't know what I didn't know. I have blind spots until I watched one, a guy I respected, Rod, scratch a check for 75 grand closing 600 houses a year to remax to buy itself out of his franchise agreement and i called him because i've been saying no for a year and a half but i still had the problem i was trying to solve right and he said you need to understand the business solution tools inside of enterprise i said i talked to five or six people i haven't heard about no business solution tools i hear about the same shit right right or whatever you might need to bleep that out but no no it's all uh, good it's all okay, good all right so it's adult program <laughs> so then I, you know so then i started shadowing him in his business solution tools and watching him start to sell houses faster going fast you know further into other markets no debt no overhead no liability no brick and mortar, no, you know, even though we still kept, you know, we have ours and a lot of my teams did personal preference, um, you know, and, and I was like, boom, the light went off. And I was like, this is exactly what I, what I needed. And, you know, for people to hit the join button, you know, for what, you know, the amount that it you know, costs to sign up to get all your tech package set up, it cost me multiple, multiple six figures, um, you know, to align it and do what I was able to do. And, I thought I was cool, you know, doing, doing what I was doing, you know, with the thousand. You're doing houses. it at a high level, like very high level, you know, like you said, over a thousand houses a year, you had a, a big team running a well-oiled machine. And right. then you saw something that was just made more sense. It was more efficient. I mean, that's what clicked for you, right? You got to understand. I didn't, I didn't know that at the time, you know, when I came on in 2018, um, you know, I, I risked a lot, you know, I, you know, I had, you know, my mentor, I've been running the business and the operations and, you know, had other people, a lot of bunch, you know, other people around me. Um, but, um, you know, his, his equity piece was up there close to $4 million, you know, and a few other people had small equity, you know, pieces that he granted them when he gave me mine and, you know, turned things over to me. Right. Um, and so we, I was going to pick that up and then still roll us the EXP. However, I ran into some other issues with my partners that just worked in the field. They weren't working in the call center. They weren't in the trenches with the agents. They weren't on the road with the expansion team. And if you go back and look at some of my other videos, I was overweight. I was drinking a lot. I was unhealthy, but I got all these awards. We're number one in Kansas for 10 years, top ranked in, you know, the states and open expansion offices. But, you know, my son can't eat those right now. Right. And that, that doesn't create more opportunity for agents like the model. The franchise model, you know, and team model work for works for a couple of people at the top, but not the masses, right? Right. Um, and, and when I have people like, you know, Tierney, you're in financial alignment with her. You know, she was the number one uh, um, team 
that I had coached over a couple of years uh, that we hit the number one um, spot in the number one market center in the world. And we're right, trying so let's to tell everyone because people don't know what we're talking about here. Tierney is Tierney Jordan. That's who you're referring to. Yeah. She's in Dallas, Texas, Tierney and Walsh. And they run, they ran a, the top team in, in Keller Williams for a long time there right. uh, and were coaching with you directly before they came over to right. join us at EXP, right? Right. Well, yeah. Well, no, she, well, she tried, we tried to get a deal done when we were independents because uh. we obviously coached her up, but then, you know, she had millions invested in her brand. We've already, I already coached her, you know, to, you know, to get into that number one spot, obviously, you know, it's all the credit to her because you have to execute, right. Execution wins. Absolutely. Um, but, but then we had millions in our brand and mo and so, and then we couldn't make the numbers work because one person ain't going to lower their flag to raise another. Right. And, and so, but there, and then there's many more cases behind that. And then when I came to EXP, she said, you must be have a midlife crisis. You know, when I, when, when it cost me all the money, I sold my coaching company and there are a lot of other factors where I couldn't work in my own hometown for a year. Um, there's just, a, there's a lot more to it. I, I risked everything I had relationships, money, equity. Yeah. Everything. You started over. Right. And so, but you know, I said, you know, come, come to this mastermind with me and, and you know, if anything, you're going to get a good vacation out of it. She came down there, shadowed me. I never asked her to partner with me, never asked her to join at that time. You know, there's a lot of theory behind this because if I was like, if I could rebuild with this tech and be closing homes, you know, at that time I was thinking small, I was thinking only nationally because I was going up and down the Midwest, right? Even though right. we're at national rankings, I was, how, how can I take what I'm doing and take these machines and implant them in other cities with other good partnerships where they run their own P&L. We have no control over that, you know, because someone's always going to get their butt hurt when you're tied to a P&L. Someone, you know, is, is, is putting in too much money or someone's not pulling, you know, the, the labor uh, or doing right. it, doing what they need to do. And then, you know, the brand and everything. Right. And this model just works um, with, with that. So I was like, if I could have 500 partners, agents, you know, and then, you know, get a lake house, run all this from my lake house in five years, because that, that, that was the perfect plan. And, and, and it took us nine years to build up to 90 agents. And that's with our call center and multiple offices. Right. And I had 90 agents and 90 days rebuilt with high quality people in 90 days. So what took us eight, nine years to build? And I came into a great foundation and a great business when I walked into it, right? To build on top of that foundation. That's in the old, uh, in the original independent model that you were in. Right, right. So I just collapsed time like no other. And I said, holy crap, I have to rethink this whole thing. I had 500 agents at the end of my, my one year mark. And, you know, I've taken a lot of time off in this model and done different things, but right around, you know, 2,400 partners and agents and, and uh, um, expanding up and down uh, North America. And then also have agents closing houses. EXP is in 24 countries right now. And there was two when I joined in 2018, but Australia, Colombia, um, you know, British Columbia and uh, the UK, India, um, you know, they're, you know, for us in the network getting going, nothing to brag about, but still getting paid on transactions there, right? That's crazy to me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, all right, let's, let's take a quick step back for a second into just plain old real estate, because you got a lot of people listening that are, you know, maybe running large teams and large teams have kind of taken over the role of what brokerages used to be. Brokerages right. used to be like a 50-50 split because they used to provide leads and they used to provide marketing and all and mentorship and training and all that. They don't do that so much anymore. They can't, they can't sustain it on the model that they're doing. You know, right. these 95, 90, 10 splits, it just doesn't work. So um, the, the, the teams, the modern sort of, uh, or modern Modern, traditional team sort of took over from that brokerage model. A lot of people that build that up to a certain level now are basically running their own brokerages and thinking of starting their own independents. You were mm -hmm. there in, with a large independent. You grew up sort of in it um, right. and then grew it to a certain level. To take that model of success, you were already successful, and to go to something completely different, I mean, that takes guts and courage and mm -hmm. vision. So mm -hmm. it's difficult because there's a lot of ego at play in everything that we do. There still is. Everything that we do has involves ego. But when you've built up a machine like that, it takes mm -hmm. a lot to be able to, to look at it and say, wait a second, maybe there's a better way of doing things. 
there, I always look at it like, you know, um, I always approach everything like I could be wrong. You know, um, when we started building a call center, everybody told me it couldn't happen. Like everyone, no one had this. Like, you know, that's why it done really well once we cracked the code. Now everybody, what do you hear all the time? ISAs, inside sales right. agents, OSAs, right? Like people told me you couldn't build a call center, a resource center, client care department, and real estate. All of everybody. It's the old way of thinking. Things are always evolving. Yeah. You know, when EXP came on, they're like, it's not sustainable, right? Like um, it won't work. And, you know, a cloud office, whether you have brick and mortar or not, like that's personal preference. Like, and so it's like, okay, you know, when I joined in 2018, we did 500 million in revenue all that year. This last year, we just came out with our financials and we did a billion in the first quarter of this year. Right. And we've opened 20 more countries and we just announced Dubai and Chile. Yeah. And I, you know, um, and I have a guy that followed his wife to Nevada for an engineering job and he was in real estate in Dubai and he came through a wise hire ad for one of my partners out in Washington. And then he's looking at how can I get into the real, real estate game in the United States and learn it. And then we're like opening Dubai and Chile got announced like it's going to be open sometime this year. So now <laughs> this guy's going to get his, you know, um, Nevada license. Came in through a different state and a partner that's looking, you know, for an opportunity. He responded to the message. <clears throat> now, and I'm in Kansas, and now we're going to be able to be in business together and start selling houses. And <clears throat> and once we open up there, right? And so we, like, we're already, you know, coming up with a strategic game plan. I'm um, uh, obviously tied in, you know, being the 28th ranked uh, person, agent, team builder globally in EXP. Like, I'm up to date with that stuff, right? And so it's just. There's no borders. There's no territory, right? And so when people said the cloud couldn't work, it is working. Even, you know, one of my buddies, he's up uh, in a different province up north. I, well, I forget the farthest east one. You know, he's he wasn't even with EXP yet, but now he's like the broker uh, in charge up there for EXP. I had a, a guy, I had five agents partner with me for two years up there. Didn't know anything about Toronto. And when I think Canada, I was thinking, <laughs> white, white hockey, you know, whatever, you right. know, we all have, you know, just our perceptions of things, right? Right. We're all <laughs> and, living in igloos and taking like, our polar bears to work. <laughs> yeah, he, like he was one of the top hundred, first hundred agents in all of EXP Canada. So he, I went through a lot of, you know, things with Bill now broker operations, same things we went through in the States, like even like you guys of how like lag and the growth is, and you know, my analogies with that. Yeah. And then, you know, as a couple of years went by and he's growing, he's doing well. And he moved over from Remax and his business didn't, if his business didn't grow or change, it saved him $70,000, you know, right off the bat. Right. And the splits, you know, we're like, this is what we're talking about too. Like don't focus on splits, focus on net profitability. Right. And so it was about net profitability and thinking like an owner, right. Not like an employee mindset. And so, um, you know, that's key that. right there. Adam, I think you, you, you touched on something that's key and that's different in real estate, especially north of the border. I find a lot of the people as real estate agents think of real estate as a job or a career rather than as a business or a business owner. And that's right. a big mind shift. Yeah. Like here's, here's the truth of it, man. Like we're running mar uh, a marketing and sales team and real estate is just the vehicle in terms of how we make money. And right. so if you don't treat this like a business and know your numbers and structure it, and we are a marketing company, right? And, and damn near direct response. And we're a sales team, right? And if you don't run it like that, you're never going to have a predictable business. I mean, you're going to have, you know, a hobby. And even if you do really well at, you know, working past clients, sphere, you know, things like that, if you don't even have a predictable way to build a good raving fans program, you're always going to be wondering where your next deal is going to come from. Right. Absolutely. And you're always going to be trading time for money. You know, like I, I made a, whether I work or not this year, I will still profit well over a million dollars, right. Whether I work or not. And I no longer trade time for money. And that's where most agents, you know, they wake up broke every month and got to restart and do it again. And most of them that don't even, 
you know, run a, like a business, they make a lot of money one month and then they go broke and they're on that roller coaster effect. Oh, I'm getting broke. Anxiety, panic. Absolutely. I don't know if this is for me. And then boom, they start doing the behaviors that got them there. But then when they start having the deals come in, making money, they quit doing those rituals and then income producing activities and they don't run a profit and loss statement. Right. And that's how we know how to do the right things in the right financial order to be able to um, run it like a business, right? And allocate budgets and, and, and build up to uh, building systems, people, you know, and, and, yeah. and, and scaling that thing to where it is a machine and can run with or without you. And, and, and you learned that in the school of hard knocks, so to speak, because right. when you first came in and developed the team, right. you know, and, and the independent brokerage, right. um, you, you were the first ones to do it. And like you said, after like nine months, you were like, I don't know if this thing's gonna work. We're, we're, we're up to our eyeballs in debt here, right. what's going on? You had to right. really focus in on the numbers and the systems to right. make that happen, right? Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, without a doubt, like most agents just have a high paying 1099 job, that's it. Like, what is your exit strategy? Even people that have small teams that are still producing, like I was on a call uh, a couple of days ago and I was looking at her numbers in her business and I said, if you quit producing, if you back out your production, you don't have a business mm -hmm. like your business can't survive with the cash that's coming in from these other agents. So you need to make some changes like and she's like, I've been doing this 20 years. You know, I know I need to, but it goes back to ego. Ego has cost me a lot of money and made me a lot of money. And and so I said, you need to you need to remove yourself from this equation and start thinking exit strategy. And you are a very talented person with a lot of knowledge and go and impact other people and create more opportunity for them, help them be more profitable. Right. And then in turn, you're going to create more leverage and then you're going to teach them how to also do the same thing. And, you know, and, you know, that that's what it's all about, helping agents build something that is bigger than their self right and most agents are so stuck on their self that um you know it, it, like they will that's the business though that's the that's the mentality when we all get into the industry well, most of us i should say especially if we get in as solo agents in most brokerages and most offices franchises doesn't matter you're like this and like this whatever's working you're holding on to tightly because the person right over here is going to compete with you and and use that to their advantage and everyone's really like kind of tight-lipped about everything. Whereas in, in this kind of environment and culture that we've created within the, the new opportunity that we have, it's a different thing, man. Everybody is sharing and wants to see and help everybody else succeed because we all succeed together. The better you do, the better I do and vice versa. Yeah. It's a yeah, very yeah. different mentality for a lot of people, especially people that are salespeople in real estate because it's not what they're used to. Have you ever been to an agent retirement party? Yeah, it's called a funeral. <laughs> like, I it mean, happen. you. I mean, you've never like I never seen people like say you know very like they're out there. You know what I mean? Why well, I sure. ended up coming from nothing and building up a good portfolio or making some good investments, but you just don't see it. Like we can show people actually how to be a new agent or a common agent and build a business without a big investment. Go try to buy a Remax. People, I, I hate to bust you guys' bubble, but people are not doing business with you because of that balloon. It is doing nothing for you. And Remax don't care if you make it or not. They're still going to get their 5%. They're still going to get their franchise fees, their desk fees, whatever. And same with all these other traditional brokerages, right? However, this is a single agent-owned brokerage. There's no recruiters. And people say, all you guys do is recruit. Like, like I got like 8,000 houses last year and we didn't have the 2,400 agents. I've doubled my stuff. And that's just with the uncapped people. So it's probably closer to what I know my true teams are at 1,600 closings, uh, 16,000 closings, right? Like we're moving units. None of this works if we're not moving units, but you will never build a business if you don't attract people to your vision and yeah. uh, to your mission. Well, uh, when you're talking about business, okay, you're talking about whether it's teams or brokerages, they always say since day one, all coaching on being more profitable in teams and businesses, it's recruit, recruit your way to profitability. That's it. That's how they build it. You go buy a hamburger shop, you go buy, uh, uh, you know, whatever business you see, there are people in there helping run that. You know what I mean? Right. However, do the people in there run that have 
50% equity in sharing the income and the revenue and, and, and open collaboration is the guy that, you know, was running that, you know, hamburger franchise showing you exactly how he's running that franchise. You got to kiss ass and put hours in just to get off minimum wage, just to hopefully be a manager one day. Right. 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 Um, so, you know, in this model, if you got the skills and you can execute, it's a, as equal company, if you can do it, do it. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Like and, and beyond way. that, it's not just a matter of if you can do it, it's people are here to show you how to do it. You know, right how many right. people have, have you helped build their, just their business, just selling homes in production? I mean, the numbers are staggering, right? I mean, the one, you know, like, I mean, Tierney that you're talking about, she just had a handful of agents and was a lead listing agent in her business. Now she has a team of 500 agents and globally, you know what I mean? Matt, Matt Smith, that guy went from 200 units. He didn't come here to build a modern team. He wanted me to show him how to build a traditional team. Most people are just trying to figure out how to build traditional teams and they're not even doing it right because the margins are so slow. If you're really right. going to generate leads, give back in support, mark, do everything. They, they, you could be having big volume and big numbers, but I don't like how profitable are you? You know what I mean? Exactly. And, 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 and not, and not too many people are, you know, and, and or you back out their production, they don't have a business. Right. And Matt, and Matt went from, you know, whatever, two to eight, well over a thousand. And I'm obviously, you know, I posted what I'm making this month, you know what I mean? Just a couple hours ago. And, um, you know, Matt and I was looking at net numbers and he's like, dude, I sold over 800 houses or it was right under 800, whatever it was at, um, you know, last year. And, um, and he's like, but we netted the same amount of money, but he's like, I killed myself doing it. And I said, dude, I've already been there and done that, done this right? You couldn't pay me enough to go back and do it, but people <laughs> are dying for us to show them how to do it. But right. there's, even a, there's even a better way, you know what I mean, to, to do this. And so, um, you know, now he's building the modern team and he's like, I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. I said, well, it's limiting beliefs, you know, it's head trash or you think that you have to do this and in terms of do that. Like we have one guy, he was stuck. He's even, even in my hometown here. Uh, you know, he went, you know, stuck at a, a company called ERA and, you know, 30 units a year, he had already been with EXP. And he's like, looking at EXP, like, well, and I'm like, who you partner with matter? Like, I'm a business with a number one, number two, number three, number four team builder in all of EXP. And my sponsor is number 19, and I'm 28. Like, who you partner with matters. This is a little piece of technology, and we're plugging it into our business. I'm, you know, if we're an independent, we're still winning. If I'm a Remax, I'm winning. This is just the most profitable model to build in and to create more opportunity for the people around me. And that's it. This wasn't about me. It's about me being able to create more opportunity for the people around me, me being able to take what I already know and contribute and impact and influence more people's lives than yeah. I could in these other models, right? And so then Matt said, and he's like, you're traveling the world. You have all these partners that are very similar because I'm not forcing working with anyone. Like I had a guy that's an icon agent looking at getting in business with us. And I got off the call with one of my other partners that were on that call. And I said, I don't even know if I want to sponsor him or I want him in my business because I like, I have to work with you. I answer my call at night and I want all of us growing because if we're not growing, it's a, re it's a reflection of top agent experts. It's a reflection of our brand promise, not EXP, but the other guy I was telling you about, it took me a year working with him, meeting him, you know, off and on having some drinks. And he's like, all right, he hopped back in with us and went from 30 units to hundred, hundred to 250 closings all within two years and helped him, you know, we got tinkled around with mortgage and now he's off and running with that. And he told me a couple of days when I go, when I talked to him, he netted after he paid his loan officers and all of his expenses, 50 grand. Right. And he just signed a lease for um, 6,000 square foot office. Right. Even though we have the cloud office, personal preference, and his goal is to close two, you know, 500 houses this year. And he has a modern network um, of probably about, I don't know, 35, 40 agents on his traditional team, about 15 that the goal is to do these 500 uh, closings. And he told me, I was judging EXP and you know how it was a flop for me before versus the partnership 
and and what we could do together and the opportunities that could come he's like man i'm a i'm glad that i didn't allow my ego or past experiences or my limiting beliefs to get in the way because i said no for a year and a half and i told this guy yesterday that's doing the 300 million up in canada we look at spreadsheets and numbers tomorrow i said you're a smart guy and if you can figure this out faster than me you know, it's going to change your life and your agent's life, but I get it because you don't have to make a decision fast. Business don't happen overnight. The, you know, number one, number two teams, big independence that's folding in with us take, I mean, it could take six months to a year for sure. you, get, for you, you get your mind wrapped around it. Absolutely. And that, and that really is the power and we'll, we'll, we'll close up the, the EXP segment. That really is the power of being in partnership with the right people because you're in partnership we are in partnership with people that have been there and done that in every avenue of business, generating business this way, structures of business this way, it doesn't matter. And everyone's open to sharing exactly how they do it and how everyone else can do it too. So that's the power of being in a, a network of partnerships with, with people at such a high level. It helps you bring your game to that level as well. It really is the basis of true teamwork. When you're talking about, you know, why are you building what you're building? Like why? you know, um, and what's the end game always begin with the end in mind. And this really is um, the best model to collaborate with very like minded people at all different levels and yeah. really learn together, not hide information or learn on your own or be sec secretive. And then also critically think as a large group globally with your stuff, not just a corporate group, and then without a doubt, we all start creating together and that creates the win-win. And I promise you, people that are growing with you and creating equity in some and residual income, um, they, like they're not going anywhere. And so the Absolutely. retention, you know, the retention uh, was my biggest fear. Proximity is power, right? Um, and then when you think cloud base and everybody's spread out, but we got more culture and community than I ever had, you know, um, as an independent doing what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I can attest to that. Being with some very, very large brands, as everybody knows, um, I was with Century 21. I was with Remax, both great companies, but you know, I've never experienced anything like I have here. And I'll be and I'll be up in Toronto soon, so look forward to a strategic growth acceleration event. You know, I flew in, started educating on the model before COVID. Had four people in my event. You know, um, and then I was flying in once a month for a couple months to lead with education, how we're selling more homes, what we're doing, actually breaking down the truth of EXP because there's a lot of myths, there's a lot of myth, you know, misinformation about the model. And the last three events I ran right before COVID hit, we had 40 to 50 people at each of those events. So I'm looking forward to making it back in the next sometime this summer. Yeah, absolutely. And if anybody listening, you know, if this sounds interesting to you, you're curious, it's piqued your curiosity, reach out to Adam, reach out to me anytime. Well, we're happy to talk to you about it. No sales pitch here. We're just an open book. Um, now let's dig really quickly for the last couple minutes that we have. Um, I'd love to get you back on because you don't have enough time for this, but you've done a training for, for me and some of my, my contacts here on right. what you were doing with ISAs. Um, mm -hmm. for lead conversion, for online leads. I mean, a big part of your business when you were when just sort of neck deep in it was marketing, right? And it was a matter of uh, attracting the calls and then converting those calls into business, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much the outbound uh, cold calling, door knocking kind of model, or was that involved as well? No, no, I mean, a lot of people think call center and, you know, people do circle prospect, call neighborhoods, surveying them, whatever, sure. if you're going to build a seller database that way. But like, the, like these were leads like that they're responding to our messages right like um whether it's inbound or outbound and you know thousands hundreds of thousands of our dials was all off our leads that we were creating right and then due to the psychology of those leads and then their process of where they're at you know intros are different structure of calls optimized closing formulas you know author key language um oh, yeah. positions yeah all of that stuff and so um you know, that's, that's what we really mastered or cracked the code on. And so, um, you know, being able, being able to do that at the highest level is, is going to, you know, spit out a lot of business, you know, to your agents and, and that, and that, and that's what it is, man. Like you're in the marketing business and you're in the sales business. That's it. Real estate is just our vehicle of how we're making money. So if you don't take data management seriously, if you don't take marketing seriously, and you're not trying to innovate with it uh, with intention, and people say, Oh, we got inventory issues, we don't have inventory issues, you know, NAR came out at least here in the States that 
we closed the most amount of homes than we had closed, I think, in the last 15 years through MLS. Like we have a competition issue, right? And if you're generating buyer leads and not controlling your inventory or creating leverage, and every time Dick and Harry is getting in real estate, then you know everything's thinned out. And that's why your marketing has to be able to differentiate from all of these frustrated part-time agents. And then you have to be able to have good systems, good processes, good marketing to outlast all of these people. So when they start falling out, like they're going to, we're already starting to see it over, you know, and it's gonna last 18 to 24 months, we get to gobble back up that market share. And then in turn, spit that back out to our agents on our team or whatever, because the people that could actually survive on their own or barely make it or do well, and if they don't have good processes, marketing, or even a database set up, they're, they're I mean, they're not going to be able to make it in the new economy that's coming because, you know, uh, Warren Buffett says it's best. And this is just how it's been. You know, we were at high tide the last couple of years. I've doubled, you know, every single year since, you know, since I moved over here to this company and no less than 25%, even as an independent. However, this year is going to be the toughest year, but it's going to, you know, it's going to require a skill-based market, right? Um, and and when it's high tide, everybody's swimming around and, and splashing at the beach and the sun's right. out and having fun. But when low tide goes out and low tide is starting, you're going to see who's skinny dipping and you're going to get caught with your pants down and then you're going to take off running. But, you know, I think, I, I you know, like a lot of people, you know, they're not going to be prepared for what's coming. And so uh, people that are operating and running it like a business, We've been looking forward to this moment. Yeah, and, and that's been a, a real key uh, for me coming into this, this situation with you and everybody else is really changing my mindset to thinking more of a business than a career. It's it's very different way of thinking, and that's the way to build it into the future. Adam, thank you so much for taking up a lot of your time. I appreciate you sharing your story and yeah. your way of doing things. Next time, you got to come on again, and we'll, we'll dig into a topic and help people, give them some takeaways that they can use in their everyday business. Yeah, I love it, man. These are ownership positions. I mean, to hit the join button for a couple hundred bucks first by buying a franchise, you don't yeah. have anything that you don't have anything to risk besides your ego. Just do it. Exactly. Thank you, guys. This has been the Real Estate Agent Advantage. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.